Well, I'm really honored to be in front of all of you, uh, especially the pioneers in the, in the enterprise architecture world. Uh, I've also been in the business for more than 20 years now and uh, recognize a lot of familiar faces from all these years. And uh, I'm really, really honored. Uh, the bad news for me was uh, this is a 115 uh, talk, right after you're making your food, and your uh, blood is digesting your food, and uh, you start being sleepy. And it gets even worse when Mike says that uh, I'm standing between you and the libations. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> My, my talk is going to be a short one. It's uh, 15 minutes of uh, information on the road app and how you can apply it to <coughs> areas other than the Department of Defense's work. And uh, then Charles is going to talk about uh, threads, joint mission threads, where uh, you actually take multiple architectures and you try to thread activities across those multiple architectures to make a joint mission. And that's a this is a result of the constitutional separation between being ready and uh, fighting, fighting wars. Uh, being ready means you have multiple architectures from the various services. War fighting, unfortunately, is done from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And that's when you need to thread all of these things to form a mission. So you're all trained under different circumstances, but you're trying to assemble a common game out of uh, the training. How many of you know about the DODA? The Department of Defense Architecture. Good, very good. Well, the, the first motivation for the DODA well, let me do that. I've uh, seen a lot of bubbles in my time, so I just thought you'd be just in this. Cloud computing is big. Uh, without waiting for the cloud to solve all the problems. Uh, the other thing which was uh, interesting was that I used about 150 slides to talk about the Dota app in my classes. And I was given 15 minutes to explain this. So, pretty much all effect. <laughs> so I'm going to try to quickly explain, uh, I'm not going to try to explain the Node app itself in terms of the products and everything else. But I'm going to talk about the essence of the Node app in terms of the type of enterprises and what you can apply the framework itself as to that type of enterprise. Uh, if you look at the origins of the Node app, it was primarily to support military operations. Mission. What's interesting about a military operation? Changing situation, austere locations, lack of resources, unpredictable operations, a lot of enemy counterattacks. There's a lot of things which are not very predictable. And so, one of the key things that you do in military operations is command and control, communications, <coughs> computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. And that's what uh, helps you keep the operation together. So a lot of the, the origins of the Node app was in C4 ISR. And C4 ISR was integrating our uh, the threading mechanism for multiple operations. So uh, the, the important thing there was to get an integrated model set. So the Node app, the, the merit of the Node app is it's a bunch of models which are integrated together, which means they perform in one model and is also performing in another model. And you can start integrating different views of the enterprise. So for the rest of us who are not DOD people, the Node app provides a way to look at models in an integrated way. Now those of us who buy uh, multi-billion dollar tools, uh, the integration comes from the tool vendor. So the tool vendor has got an encyclopedia. But there's also a thinking angle where we have to think of the same common objects when we are architecture. The tool vendor is not going to provide that. And so more often than not, as enterprise architects, we are trying to build an integrated model which allows us to do situation assessment, common operating picture, chain of command, interoperability, information exchange, and information storage. Now, I know a lot about federal enterprise architecture. And uh, what we're doing in federal art enterprise architecture is governing money and governance, not complexity of operations. So this is where the DODAP and the FEA have diverged dramatically in terms of focus. The focus of the FEA has been on managing governance related activities on IT infrastructure. The focus on the DOD has been joint operations which are seamless and there's no loss of life and uh, there is a level of correlation between the readiness parts and the warfighting parts. So these are fundamental differences in the way the, the, the two organizations have approached enterprise architecture. And the question for us really is do we have any situation in the federal government 
which are similar to military operations that we need to worry to, to get a handle on. Our submit, there are lots of them. When you get to search and rescue operations, those are unpredictable. The course of the events can change. The conditions are different. And those can be modeled using something like the LODAM. When you get to interdiction at the border and coastal waters, customs and border protection, same situation. When you get to firefighting operations and wildfires like FEMA, or we were talking about the Air National Guard or dumping uh, huge amounts of water on fires from planes from the sky, uh, you're talking about operations. Uh, environmental cleanups, EPA does the same thing too. When you talk about law enforcement operations, the FBI, the Inspector General is doing audits and inspections. Those are operational oriented. And when you talk about intelligence gathering and analysis, the intelligence community is constantly gathering information, processing the information, and, uh, and getting information out of the intelligence. So, <coughs> so the, the DODAF uh, 2.0, for me it was like a kid in a candy shop. It's got all the stuff I didn't have earlier <laughs> in 1.5. Uh, it's got goals, objectives, strategies, it's got capabilities, it's got programs and initiatives, and all the things that we never had in the past. We were modeling operations, we were modeling systems, we were modeling technology. Now we have a lot more than just that. And so there's a recognition now that the DOD itself is an enterprise. And uh, the DOD enterprise is broken into different types of enterprises. There's an information enterprise inside the DOD. The defense enterprise architecture is the DOD's enterprise architecture. And then there are component service enterprise architectures for the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army. <coughs> So within the big, and again, I want to stress the fact that the DOD is a readiness providing organization. And the war fighting is done by joint forces. So these are all readiness and infrastructure kinds of architectures which build capabilities for the Department of Defense, uh, for, the, for the war fighting here. Okay, one of the big things is uh, differentiating between process driven enterprises and operations driven enterprises. The federal government, for, for the most part, in a lot of things are process driven. And so typically in a process driven enterprise, your plan, execute, and close up are the, are the main steps, with resourcing and enabling, and monitoring and government. In an operations driven enterprise, the model is a little different. It's called OODA loop. How many of you, how many of you are familiar with OODA loop? In this case, you observe, you orient, you decide, and then you act. Then you observe again and you orient, reorient, then you decide and then you act. So this is a tactical way of dealing with, with actions. Whereas the other one is more of a steady state, stable way of dealing with operations. So there are different, sorry, I'm losing the thread here. DODAF 2.0, uh, like Mike said, we have more than 50 plus models and uh, eight viewpoints. So there's one for everything that you want to do. There's a strategic viewpoint, which is provided by capability. Then there's a viewpoint on initiatives and projects, which are provided by the project viewpoint. There's an operational viewpoint, which is uh, provided by the operations. Business and software services, by the services viewpoint. And systems, in the systems viewpoint, Standards in the standard viewpoint, information in the data and information view, and architecture projects in the all, all view. Most federal agencies have the same, same issues. You know, you've got an initiative planning issue, you've got a strategic issue, you've got operations issues. The difference here is that we outsource a lot of our IT to contractors. And in the DOD, the operations unfortunately cannot be outsourced. They wind up being performed by DOD people in uniforms with the threat of death hanging over there. And hence, the operational view is a big part of the DODAF in terms of the issues. Uh, 